Good evening and welcome to Estuary TV News coming up tonight. We look at the problem of dog fouling in Cleethorpe Cemetery. And joining me in the studio is Steve Elwes, local businessman who is about to star in a documentary. But first, here's James Dunn with the news headlines. Hello and welcome to Estuary TV News. In the headlines today, the top nurse in England praises a new facility in Grimsby and Hull MPs criticise the government's stance on green energy. England's top nurse has said that the country should do more to make health services more accessible to vulnerable groups. Jane Cummings made the comments as she visited Grimsby this week to see the opening of a new £2.2 million centre in the deprived East Marsh area. It's funded by the Department of Health and aims to help people who traditionally don't access services, such as the homeless. We certainly need more um, and we need to spend, I think, in the NHS and health and social care a lot more attention on improving inequality so that we really do provide services for those that need it most who are the, the classic type of, of patient that doesn't get the opportunity to seek help when they need it. Hull MPs have criticised the government for giving out mixed messages on green energy. Diana Johnson and Alan Johnson met with government ministers yesterday along with the chairman of the Humber Local Enterprise Partnership, Lord Haskins. The criticism came after the government announced a change in the way subsidies will be paid to energy companies for investment in green energy, such as wind turbines. They feel that the uncertainty could harm the Humber area, which hopes to secure a multi-million pound investment in a wind farm on Alexandra Dock from Siemens. A councillor in North East Lincolnshire is calling for a ban on dogs in cemeteries. Keith Brooks handed in a petition against dogs in graveyards after some mourners found excrement on graves. Now he wants a full ban and suggests that owners apply for licences from the council if they want to take their dogs to see the graves of loved ones. The council is still considering the quest, but in the meantime has promised to step up patrols. They, they bring dogs in, they allow them to foul over the top of the, the graves and there's nothing more distressing, of course, than relatives coming down to lay flowers or visit a grave, uh, and it's been badly uh, fouled by dogs. Staff took strike action at Grimsby Institute yesterday. A number of teachers and other employees manned a picket line outside the college because of a dispute over pay and work conditions. It's the second time that employees have taken industrial action this year. It's a national dispute over pay. Essentially what we've had over the last four years is a 15% cut in real terms to our wages. So we've gone on strike today. But there's also a local dispute uh, which is about the erosion to our terms and conditions of employment right across the Grimsby Institute. And also um, it's affected our incremental pay rises which we've got rid of and it's increased our workload as well. I'm, I'm mindful of the way that lecturers and admin support have had their um, salaries frozen or, or held back for the last half decade now and they're, 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 they're keen to not only um, do as, as well as they can for themselves but also try and raise the, the status of, of, of their jobs and make sure that students get the best deal possible and that can only be done really if we're continually attracting and maintaining the best people for those jobs and salary pays part of that. Hull City Council are encouraging people to get back into education with the launch of a new adult learning guide. Enrolment has now started for spring 2014 and courses range from DIY to first aid. Gary Parkinson of the Hull Training and Adult Education Service running the course said that it can help develop skills and progress your career. For more information you can visit the council's website. Only 100 people have told North Lincolnshire Council which services they value as they try to find spending cuts. There is only two weeks left of the consultation, which will impact councillors' decision on where the cuts come between 2014 and 16. You can access the survey via the council's website. Up to 40 small libraries in Lincolnshire could be run by members of their communities. Lincolnshire County Council announced the decision yesterday after a consultation into how to make the service more affordable and better tailored to the user's needs. It will continue to run 15 local libraries across the county, but community groups taking charge can access a one-off £15,000 grant to set up the facility. The council will continue to maintain the buildings, but groups can get up to £5,000 a year to help with the running costs. The change is a response to the council's need to save £2 million a year from the service which is being used less and less. That's all for Mr. TV News today. Catch us at our next bulletin.
Now, our next report is about dog mess, something which many people complain about. No one likes to see it and certainly no one likes to tread in it. Well, one North East Lincolnshire councillor is calling for a ban on dogs being taken into cemeteries. James Dunn went to meet him to find out why. It's something that's unpleasant wherever you are, but here in one of North East Lincolnshire's graveyards, dog fouling is all the more offensive. That's why councillor Keith Brooks is leading a campaign to ban dogs from graveyards after some mourners found mess on their loved ones' graves. It's a sad day, of course, when you have to look at banning dogs in cemeteries, but unfortunately people do bring dogs into the cemetery. They don't always keep them on the lead. The dogs foul the, um, the graves, and there's nothing worse for any relative or friend coming to visit a grave and finding it's badly fouled by dogs. Current council rules say that dogs can go into cemeteries but must be kept on a lead at all times, although Mr Brooks thinks that they don't go far enough. He's handed in a petition calling for a full ban, but Martin Teamby, who visits his wife's grave with his dogs, thinks that that could be a problem. But the fact is that a lot of people bring the dogs here uh, when they're visiting their relatives or so grave um, that, you know, sometimes they can't uh, leave them at home. Mr Brooks has suggested that people with loved ones buried in the cemeteries could apply for licences to take their dogs there if the ban is imposed. But in the meantime, he's been assured that officers will step up patrols. Is anybody that, that's... Uh owned a dog uh, and would like to bring the dog down to the, the relative's grave, um, they'll be able to register with an appropriate officer um, so that they are recognised as an official permit holder to bring that dog in. And joining me in the studio to talk further about this issue is Councillor Keith Brooks. Councillor Brooks, welcome to the programme. Um, now, currently then, people are allowed to take dogs into the cemeteries, but you're wanting a full ban. How soon can this enforcement take place? What's got to be done next? Well, I think, first of all, Emma, it, we've got to say, isn't it a sad day when you actually have to sit here and look at having to propose strict, heavy legislation on what is something that should be normal and respectful that dog owners should have? Um, that there are some um, legislation that we can use now uh, to help us enforce things, but quite clearly the, the way things are going, we need specific legislation that deals with our cemeteries. Okay. Now, obviously, people are, we, we saw a gentleman in there who goes in there, and some people are keeping their dogs on a lead and under control and, and cleaning up for them. Um, but this permit, it's been suggested maybe that if you, if you want to go visit your loved ones then you'll need a permit to take your dog into a cemetery. Is this just long-winded administration? No, if you're going to bring a ban in that makes it easier for us, that's total ban, I think you've got to be sensitive of people that, that have loved ones in there that want to go in there and take the dog. And those people will be able to apply for a pass, a licence, to be able to take the dog into a cemetery. Okay, and the, the other thing that uh, has also been mentioned as well about CCT possibly being installed to obviously monitor um, the, the situation. Again, is that really needed and at what cost would that be to the taxpayer? Well, it's, it's minimal cost really because we've got a substantial circuit of CCTV in the borough. Um, but I think we, we've also got to remember that we've had quite a lot of damage goes on in the cemetery as well. Another unfortunate problem. And of course, by putting cameras in, we, we can monitor the people that are coming in to look at where damage has occurred and not just dog fouling. OK. Now, that's for Cleethorpes. Will it be rolled out to Grimsby Cemetery as well? Oh, yes. The same problem is occurring at Grimsby, unfortunately. So we're looking at Cleethorpes and Grimsby Cemetery. And I would hope... Uh, any other uh, cemeteries, burial grounds that are under uh, the jurisdiction of North East, North East Lincolnshire Council. So thank right. you, Councillor Brooks.
A Grimsby businessman is soon to be the star of a Channel 4 documentary. Steve Elwes started out as a second-hand car salesman and learnt many lessons after going bust. The man who buys anything is the title and literally he buys anything. Well, Steve. Hi, Emma. What a title to live up to. The man oh. that buys anything. We buy anything. <laughs> what exactly do you buy Where then? Where do I begin? Try, try me. <laughs> name a product. Okay, name a product. Uh, TV cameras. Bought them. Seriously. Done them. Lots of them. Dog poo bags. Yes, we've had those. <laughs> we don't collect dog poo. <laughs> makeup. Well, we do a lot of makeup. Yeah, we've had lots of Sofas. branded makeup. Sofas, yeah. You see, you, I mean, in the trailer, you're there buying we buy anything, an aeroplane, yeah. aren't you? That was a hospitality unit, the aeroplane. Right. But that is a, that was physical, yeah. That was an actual made by the MOD, my uh, guy that I knew bought it and he wanted to sell it to me, so we buy anything. You've now focused. I've done some random things in my life. I was going to say, you've gone from car salesman, you got your fingers Night burnt club in owner. a way. Nightclub yeah, owner. Yeah, I lost a lot of money. I mean, most people in this area will know your name. Of course, name. I'm fairly well known. You're well known. I've lost a lot of money in my life, made a lot of money, tried hard, but we're still going strong. Well, I was going to say, now what you're basically doing is making money out of other people's misfortunes, I suppose, aren't I you? I don't like that word particularly because of that's been said to me by the Channel 4 team, uh, Firecracker. It's not misfortune. People ring the office or we, uh, and they say, would you buy this makeup? I'm closing my shop down. I vi visit the shop. I look at the stock, make an offer. Or we get it emailed to us. A lot of it now is on email. Right. If we're not sure, we do do the visit. Myself or one of the team, we visit, we look at the stock, we value it and we make the offer. And as I said to f before to other people I've been interviewed by, people uh, don't have to say yes, they can say no. Yeah. You know, we, we, we're not a predator, we feel like predators but we're not. Hopefully we're kind people. Well, the other thing as well, you, you, you say you literally buy anything. We do. Do you know that when you get that stock, you've got somebody no. else wanting it? No. You take that risk. We do know where it's going to be sold. Our okay. database is quite huge. We deal with lots of corporate people. Um, we bought a load of speakers uh, this week, but we knew where to place the speakers. We knew who would take them off us. Okay. Um, I bought a huge amount of extra virgin olive oil and sold it to a very well-known store group. Right. Very easily. We do get stuck with a lot of stock and we've got lots of stock to, that we're stuck with. What do you do with that then? We do find a home for it. We sell it less than we paid for it. We give a lot to charity. But we, d we generally we come out of it. Okay. We've done it for a long, a lot, long, year, long years now, so we've got the hang of it. Well, this, I was going to say, you've got enough years' experience. Yeah, we, we make mistakes. We make huge mistakes. Yeah. If we didn't make mistakes, we wouldn't be in business. And that is something now, is you, you suppose your next step forward, is you want to impart that business knowledge I do. to the next yeah, set I've got of lots entrepreneurs of, out there. Absolutely, all the younger people, hopefully they can learn off me. Yeah, so I what, what is mentor. the next stage then? What are, what are your plans now? What's my next now? stage? I like the, my uh, school of trading, where I pass my trading tips on, teach every, all these young guys to go out and trade like me. Yeah. I mean, you couldn't do what I do overnight. I mean, this is 20 years of making mistakes. Uh, Lots of ups, lots of downs, lots of going home at night, depressed because I've lost a lot of money. Then going home at night and dancing because I've made a lot of money. You've probably seen my little dance on the TV, <laughs> haven't you? Yes. <laughs> that's when the results take place. It's that, that's when you're happy. Happy. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> but the bad, you know, we get bad times and then we bought a large amount of art and craft and we got stuck with it and we expected to make fortunes and it's turned out to be a right... Non right, right. We've okay. got to bosh it now and get rid of it. Right. Uh, Say, so, I mean, this is it. You, you're, you're in all of that. You take those yep. risks, but your business. Aren't I take you? risks, but I love it. Brilliant. Well, we're going to have to end it there. Thank you so much nice. for coming in. So that's, that's Channel that's Four, Thursday, nine o'clock. That's it from us. Until next time. Goodbye. It.